Across a world we live, in cities and villages, all part of a greater whole, but we are not alone. They come in herds, hives and swarms, tribes, packs and pairs, living in nature, members of society. From the densest jungle to rock deserts, one group of mammals can be found unlike all the rest, marsupials. There are over 300 species existing across the Americas and Australia, ranging in size from the largest, the red kangaroo at nearly 6 feet tall, to the smallest, the marsupial mice at a mere 2 inches. While superficially similar to many other mammals, they are distinct for their unique reproductive system, embryos developing neither in an egg nor a placenta, but in a kind of yolk sac in the womb. The neonatal young, emerging tiny and underdeveloped, crawling across its mother's body to find its abdominal pouch for nursing, where it remains until waning. A distinct life cycle most exemplified by the image of the kangaroo and its young, the joey. The most recognizable and largest of all marsupials, kangaroos are endemic to Australia alone. They are members of a family of macropods, a common group of marsupials including padamelons and quakas, as well as the three groups of closely related wallabies, wallaroos and kangaroos. Kangaroos, being a general term for the larger species at over 5 feet tall, weighing as much as 200 pounds, with wallabies being the smallest, on average 20 to 40 inches tall, weighing 3 to 10 pounds. Wallaroos being an intermediate group. Also related are the tree kangaroos, equivalent in size to wallabies, but purely arboreal. Kangaroos also being additionally distinct for their upright stance, long muscular tail for balance, and relatively small elongated head as well as their unique hopping gait and large powerful hind legs and feet used to achieve it. Being the only large animal to hop as a means of locomotion, commonly reaching speeds of around 12 to 15 miles per hour, though over 40 miles per hour sprints have been observed. Four species in all, they can primarily be identified by the varying size and color of their fur, varying between red, gray and brown, or tan spread throughout the open plains, savannas and forests of Australia, as they are strictly herbivorous, being both widespread grazers as well as feeding on shrubs and leaves, depending on the species. Most kangaroos, being nocturnal or crepuscular, resting during the day, emerging in the late afternoon to forage for food. Highly social animals, kangaroos are most commonly found in groups known as mobs, consisting of ten or more individuals, depending largely on geographic region. Eastern Australian mobs generally being larger and more stable than their western counterparts. Red kangaroos mainly found in groups of only two to four members, membership being typically highly flexible and not tied to a fixed territory, wherein members may come and go as they see fit as part of natural migration and foraging behavior. Though typically females, known as flyers, develop strong bonds with related individuals of the same sex, staying within the same mob. Most groups, consisting of two to three often related females and their offspring, along with an equivalent number of males, or boomers, with one dominant individual. The larger the group, the more intricate their social structure becomes. With significant social interactions, not unlike those of ungulates such as wild horses or antelopes. Though no permanent hierarchy exists, dominance may be asserted with force, particularly during mating season. While both sexes of kangaroos may be prone to infighting for drinking spots or food, most commonly it's males who engage in ritualized boxing for dominance and mating privileges, often initialized by long-standing rivalries between individuals as mutual scratching and grooming prior to the fight, or out of nowhere. One or both then adopt a standing posture, grasping the other male's neck with its forepaw to issue a challenge which may be rejected, as with younger males challenging larger ones. They may then paw and strike at each other's heads, shoulders and chests, even supporting themselves on their tail to kick each other, locking forearms to wrestle their opponent to the ground. The winner asserting his dominance by displacing the loser from the resting places and pushing them into the fringes of the mob area. 
the primary means of communication between kangaroos being olfactory, with mutual sniffing and grooming making up nearly all social interaction within a mob, picking up significant chemical cues by the smell of each individual relaying its health, age and status, and forcing social hierarchies through subtle bonded language cues while sniffing as well, maintaining social cohesion with minimal aggression. The most significant interactions occurring during mating Kangaroos may mate all year round, mature females going into estrus approximately every five weeks. Though their reproductive cycle may be temporarily halted due to harsh environmental conditions, such as severe drought, it remains relatively uncommon for most species. The estrus female initialize seeking out a mate, roaming widely to attract the attention of males through sniffing and body language. Once a mate has been found, the kangaroos form a consort pair mutually courting each other over a period of days, which may also attract rival males, causing fights for dominance and mating rights. The victorious male initially approaching the female slowly to avoid startling her, after a prolonged courtship of the male licking, pawing and scratching the female, they mate. Mating being long, often 20 minutes or longer, to ensure that conception occurs. Kangaroos of both genders using a system of paired genitalia, effectively doubling their chances of conception, after mating, the male moves on to another female. Kangaroo pregnancy lasts around four to five weeks, the neonatal young emerging only an inch or two long, its hind legs being mere stumps. It instead uses its more developed forearms to pull itself through the mother's thick fur onto the pouch, a perilous though quick process of only a few minutes. Once in the pouch, it fastens onto one of the two teats inside to feed. Immediately, the mother's estrous cycle begins again and she will seek out a mate. Many females achieving a state of permanent pregnancy, given their unusual ability to freeze their embryos or to delay the development and birth of the baby, a process known as embryonic diapause. To ensure another embryo may develop as soon as the previous joey leaves the pouch and the new embryo may take its place. The joey grows steadily while in the pouch, nursing full time for up to 190 days, sticking its head out a few weeks prior to feeling safe enough to leave the pouch. From then on, it spends more and more time outside of the pouch until 8 months of age when it leaves the pouch for the last time. Though it will keep nursing periodically by sticking its head into its mother's pouch until 12 months of age. While male kangaroos take no part in raising their young, females may engage in alloparenting, occasionally adopting other females' joeys, caring for them as their own. After fully weaned, the joey remains a juvenile kangaroo until between 18 months to 2 or 3 years, at which point they reach maturity and may seek out a mate of their own. Since the extinction of the Tasmanian tiger, adult kangaroos have very few natural predators with only juveniles being targeted by dingoes, eagles and guanas. Coupled with disease, infighting and harsh environmental conditions, most juvenile kangaroos don't survive into maturity. The average lifespan of kangaroos being at around 6 years only. One of the most famous animals of all Australian wildlife. It is renowned for its iconic appearance, with its round shape, thick grey-brown fur, round fluffy ears and large spoon-shaped nose, being on average 24 to 34 inches long, weighing 10 to 30 pounds, with southern koalas often being considerably larger than their northern counterparts, despite being of the same singular species. And while it's often referred to as a bear, all similarities with the canine family of bears are strictly superficial, being instead closest in relation to wombats than any other animal. They can be found in the coastal regions all along eastern and southern Australia, both in tropical and subtropical areas and even semi-arid climates, typically residing around local coastal woodlands and open forests, as the leaves of the eucalyptus trees make up the vast majority of their diet and the koalas themselves are highly arboreal, rarely leaving the tree branches and foliage they've resided in their whole lives, using sharp curved long claws to easily grip into the tree trunks and branches, with opposable digits on the forelimbs, using their well-developed sense of smell to sniff out the fresher branches of leaves for consumption, while its hearing is additionally well-developed to aid in avoiding predators and threats, with a well-developed middle ear providing a strong sense of balance. 
Though their eyesight is considerably poor, with small underdeveloped eyes featuring slits for pupils. Due to their diet, koalas have evolved several specializations to accommodate the low nutritional value and high fiber values of the eucalyptus leaves, as well as its high toxicity. With uniquely shaped teeth, as well as large cheek pouches capable of storing additional food while chewing. Koalas sometimes also regurgitating partially digested food to be chewed a second time. Having a significantly extended sacrum or large intestine appendix to enable hindgut fermentation letting food particles ferment for extended periods of time to allow their intestinal bacteria to release as many nutrients as possible. Though in turn, the high water content of the eucalyptus leaves allows the koala to go long periods of time without drinking, smaller females foregoing any additional water consumption entirely. But because of the low energy derived from their food, koalas are additionally highly sedentary, sleeping 20 hours each day, only waking up intermittently in 4 to 6 sessions every day to feed in their immediate vicinity, consuming only 14 ounces of leaves a day. The koala also has one of the smallest brains in proportion to its body weight as a result of their limited diet. Occupying only 60% of its cranial cavity, surrounded by a large amount of cerebrospinal fluid, protecting the brain from shock in case of a high fall. Due to this, koalas have only limited abilities to perform complex behaviors outside of instinctual foraging and seeking out mates. Koalas are typically antisocial, with the only significant bonds being between mothers and their offspring, spending on average only 15 minutes a day in social behaviors, often as a result of overlapping territories. Southern koala home ranges typically being smaller with extensive overlaps, while in northeastern Australia koala home ranges are far larger and have significantly less overlap. Koala societies mainly consist of residents and transients, residents being females and older males with fixed ranges, while transients are younger males looking to establish a territory, resident males being highly territorial, dominating other koalas by leaving significant scent markings around this territory rubbing against new trees with a chest gland leaving a complex chemical secretion that may vary in composition with the season and age of the individual, as well as loud low-pitched bellowing calls, including snore-like inhalations, wails and growls, produced by a unique vocal organ located in the soft palate, calls that may travel for miles. The same calls also used by males during mating season to attract a mate while females use softer bellows and snarls in times of distress or as a defensive call, young koalas similarly squeaking when threatened. Despite their lacking eyesight, many koalas also use a variety of facial expressions to signal anger, fear, defensiveness and submission, particularly among males and pregnant or lactating females who are more likely to become involved in fights and territorial displays including biting, wrestling and chasing behaviors, cornering intruding koalas to drive them out of specific areas or trees. Koalas have fixed annual mating seasons, commonly around September until April at the latest. Because of their larger size, males may often force themselves onto nearby females if not responding to his calls. Her screams inviting him off, attracting other nearby males, which may in turn result in male-on-male -male combat for dominance prior to mating allowing the female to assess the more virile dominant male, after which she submits to him willingly, many males accumulating significant scarring on their exposed noses and eyelids as a result. Mating itself is then quick and repeated, after which the male leaves to seek out another mate, taking no part in caring for the female or their offspring, while the female attempts to gain as much weight as she can for the oncoming pregnancy. Koala gestational periods lasting for 35 days, with interbirth intervals of 1 to 2 years, the female giving birth to a single joey with twins being a rarity. The young are born as an embryo, weighing less than a fiftieth of an ounce. Though they may have a relatively well-developed upper body, as well as respiratory and digestive systems, it crawls into its mother's pouch to continue the rest of its development over the next year. Suckling on one of its two teats, the mother preparing its young for its eucalyptus diet by pre-digesting the leaves only as it begins to venture out to the pouch finally at six months of age, producing a fecal pap that she then feeds to its young. By nine months of age, it will have already exceeded two pounds in body weight and developed its adult fur. It rides its mother's back from then on, gradually spending more and more time away hunting fully weaned at twelve months of age. Once the mother becomes pregnant again, she severs all bonds with its previous offspring, becoming aggressive and driving its young out to seek out a territory of its own. Females then become sexually mature at three years of age, while males only mature at age four, beginning scent-marking behaviors and territorial markings. 
Despite their sedentary nature, koalas have few predators, dingoes and large pythons being the primary threat for adults. While large predatory birds such as eagles and owls may prey on juveniles, koala lifespans range from 13 to 18 years in the wild, females commonly living longer due to high mortality rates among males. Around age 6, the molar of the koala begins to wear down and their chewing efficiency slows gradually. Once they reach their early teens, many koalas lose their teeth completely and the animal dies of starvation. Possums A white term to describe two distinct groups of marsupials. They are possums of the Americas over a hundred species in all, and true possums of Australia, Papua New Guinea, and Indonesia, 70 species in all. True possums actually being closer in relation to kangaroos, while opossums diverge early from a common ancestor of all marsupials, being the only marsupial found in the Americas, though the opossum were the first to be described and earned the moniker of possum. The two groups are superficially similar, being small to medium-sized marsupials with short, stocky bodies, long snouts, and thin, muscular tails. The external differences between the two groups being subtle. True possums generally having fur-colored tails, larger ears, and a narrower snout. While opossums have only light fur or scales on their tails, smaller ears, and a larger, more prominent snout. Possums may range in size from the largest, the bear Cuscus of Indonesia at 4 feet in length, weighing up to 15 pounds, to the smallest, the Tasmanian pygmy possum, at less than 6 inches in length, weighing a third of an ounce. Either brown, black, white, or grey in color, they are broadly omnivorous or herbivorous, as well as highly opportunistic. Feeding on anything from insects and bird eggs to fruits and foliage, even smaller mammals. True possums typically exhibiting greater dietary specialization than opossums, with many species of true possum preferring individual insects or plants over all others. While opossums can often be found to eat almost anything, with an unusually diverse array of teeth to accommodate almost any diet. Both groups are generally nocturnal foragers, preferring to sleep during the day in a primitive nest in a hidden crevice or hollow tree, often filled with twigs and leaves, emerging in the late afternoon or at night to hunt, frequently being partially or fully arboreal, often found climbing trees and man-made structures in search of food, with a prehensile tail to aid in climbing, not unlike New World monkeys, though it is too weak to support the entirety of the possum's weight. Generally solitary, only a few species of possum may come in pairs or smaller familial groups. They are instead often openly hostile to any other individual of the same species and highly defensive of their territory. Possums often being either partially transient or with fixed home ranges, while opossums are almost exclusively nomadic, particularly males prone to violent clashes when encountering one another, biting and scratching each other. Many males often covered in scars as a result. As such, vocal communications may vary greatly, but remains largely primitive, primarily consisting of hostile barking, snarling, hissing and shrieking for threats and displays of dominance, with non-verbal communication often limited to basic signs of aggression or submission. Their only other form of communication occurs through scent markings, many possums marking their territory with urine and by rubbing against tree trunks with their scent glands as well as distributing their saliva on branches, emitting a powerful musky odor signaling the age, sex and status of the individual, warding off members of the same sex while attracting mates. While all possums are typically polyesterous, the female entering into estrus every 30 to 60 days, many possums are limited to only one or two litters per year, depending on building up fat reserves to prepare for birth, giving and lactation. Mating season typically occurs around spring or early summer for most species, when food is still abundant, both sexes often having multiple partners, courtship being either simplistic or non-existent. Male opossums, for instance, attracting their mate by mating a clicking sound out of the side of their mouth, which is then reciprocated by the female prior to mating. 
Mating is quick and seldom repeated for any significant duration. The male then either leaves voluntarily or is forced out by the female, taking no part in raising their young. True possums may then have a litter of between two to six young, depending on the species, while opossums typically give birth to a very large litter of up to 20 young, many of which failing to attach to a teat, limiting the surviving young to 13 at most. Unlike other marsupials, opossums possess a primitive kind of placenta assisting in the development of their young, though the gestational period remains the same for both groups at between 12 to 16 days, up to 30 for some species. The newborn may be less than half an inch long, weighing a tenth of an ounce for some species, emerging blind and weak, crawling their way across the mother's stomach to find its pouch to begin nursing. Only leaving its mother's pouch upon weaning between nine weeks to four months, depending on the species, at which point they move to the mother's back, clinging on to her even as large groups of young until large enough to forage for themselves, venturing further and further away from the mother while in the nest, until strong enough to attempt to seek out food on its own. Most possums reach maturity at around 6 to 12 months of age. Males are then forced out upon maturity while females may remain nearby, leading to many females having higher survival rates than males, alongside the increased aggression and conflict-prone nature of many males. Despite opossums having unusually robust immune systems, featuring total or partial immunity to many poisons and venoms of their natural enemies, their lifespans may range only two to four years due to environmental conditions and predation by animals such as wolves, foxes, raptors, and snakes. While true possums may often live well into their teens, some species being the longest lived marsupials in existence, with fewer natural predators in their habitat. Unlike most other animals, when threatened by a predator, possums often attempt to stand perfectly still rather than flee, relying on their small size and color pattern blending into the environment in order to not be detected. Opossums also exhibit one unique additional behavior as a threat response. They play dead. An involuntary reaction closer to fainting rather than a conscious act it quickly collapses on the spot, foaming at the mouth while baring its teeth and excreting a foul-smelling fluid from its anal glands, only regaining consciousness after a period of a few minutes up to four hours. Possums, along with koalas and kangaroos, while exotic and strange compared to many other mammals, they nonetheless form an essential part of the circle of life surrounding them. Whether predator or prey, solitary or in large mobs, they help shape their environment and surrounding ecosystem, each of them a member of an animal society.